Hello and welcome to my channel. This video shows how I replaced this old light with a new Koda motion activated LED security floodlight from Costco. I will be covering unboxing of the new light, removal of the old light and then its installation and testing. Let's get started. Today I'm going to talk about this motion activated LED security sensor light. The brand is Koda. I got it from Costco for $30. It has adjustable light heads, 4200, 4200 lumens light. Detection movement is about 70 feet away or 21 meters. It is weather resistant. Let's unbox it and see what is in the package. As usual, product registration. A user manual which is pretty bulky i think i have to read a lot from here mounting bracket with usual three wires black white and ground and a connector here this is the actual light silica gel mounting hardware and the actual light here. Let me put the box away. And here is the light. The main floodlight adjustable. Normally we put it like this when it is installed straight to the wall. Sensor faces downwards. This light is adjustable. You can adjust it like that. You can also adjust the angle of the side lights up and down vertically as well as horizontally to any direction you want. This is the motion detector. All the settings are on this panel here. The sensitivity can be low, medium or high, such as here. Lux, when does it light up and when does it turn off? When it is on and when it is off. And the timer, which can be set to 1 minute, 3 minutes or 7 minutes. Light intensity, high or low. I will make these settings when I install it later today. On the back side, you can see the connector here, power connector here. Three pins, they go into this connector on the mounting bracket so that we don't make a mistake. This block goes right here. And then there's a screw on the front. We tighten that screw. The installation will be easy. And I can see in this uh, hardware box, there's a mounting bracket goes onto the electrical box in the wall. There are plenty of screws and three wire nuts. I will install the sensor light in my other house. As usual, the project started with turning off the circuit breaker. The old light was installed on a round wooden block on top of aluminum siding using four long two and a half inch or maybe three inch long screws. I should have removed the old halogen bulbs before removing the screws. Removing the mounting screws also removed the round wooden block. Once again, I checked that there was no live wire before proceeding. I used the client tools touchless voltage tester for this purpose. Then I removed the wire nuts from the ground wire, the white wire and black wire and put the wire nuts back on the wires coming from the wall for safety. That completed the removal part of the job. Since there was no electrical outlet box on the wall, I had to make a big square hole 
in the wooden block to fit the new mounting plate. After placing the wooden block back on the wall, I connected the three wires from the white mounting plate to the wires coming from inside the house. The green ground wire connected to the bare copper wire which is ground. The white wire is neutral connected to white wire and the black which is hot or line connected to the black wire from the white plate. After tightening the wire nuts, I wrapped the three wires with black electrical tape. It was a good idea due to outdoor installation. I fixed the round wooden block using the same old long screws. At the same time I was thinking why the builder or the person who installed this light uh, did not use an electrical outlet box. That would have made my job much easier. Then I securely pushed all the wires back inside the wooden block. Next I installed the mounting bracket with the screws that came with the package. I tried to keep the mounting bracket horizontal. This mounting bracket should have been installed before installing the white mounting plate in case I had the electrical outlet box. When attaching the mounting plate to the wooden block, I kept the up arrow on the mounting plate upwards and used the long mounting screw which came with the package. This was to ensure that the security light would be installed in correct orientation. The mounting bolt was tightened using my Black & Decker 4 volt electric screwdriver. This is how I made sure the bolt was actually tight. To attach the security light to the mounting bracket, I first aligned the light to the mounting bracket and then used the long mounting bolt in the center. Once again I used the Black & Decker screwdriver to tighten the bolt. Because the mounting bolt goes from plastic to plastic, I was careful to use a manual screwdriver to make sure it was firmly tight. I completed the installation by making minor adjustments to the sensor light and left the other settings such as sensitivity, brightness and timer settings to be done at night. And this completed the first half of the installation project. As indicated by the manual, the settings side of the sensor must be kept down and here are my settings. The sensitivity is medium, lux is in the center that means the security light will be on, will turn on only at night when it senses someone moving. The timer is currently set to one minute but I'll make it three minutes. The light once turned on will stay on for three minutes and brightness at the bottom it can be low or it can be high on that side there is no middle setting so I'll keep it at high because I have a long long driveway this is roughly about 40 feet so I'll wait for the night to see whether the light is functioning well or not. If I keep the sensor 90 degrees to the wall like that, it will detect motion for up to 70 feet. About 140 feet, it will detect motion up to about 50 feet. So that's about 140 feet. 